We flew from Fairbanks to Dillingham on Alaska Airlines, and then we chartered Chick Chick Adventures to fly us into Nishlik Lake, which is the uppermost lake in the park. This part of the park doesn't allow any motors or boats and requires a use permit. They limit the number of people, so it's unlikely you're going to see anybody but your group. Nishlik Lake is a few miles long, and the river is about 45 miles. The water is all class 1 with just a little bit of class 2, so it's a perfect trip for beginners. The group included from the left Dave Sauer, Sarka Paragai, Tom Paragai, myself, John Morick, and Jenna Murray. On the way in, we flew over the portage that we did a few years ago on an earlier trip. This portage is over a mile long and it took us over a day to do it.
we got dropped off at the upper end of Nishlik Lake and uh, we spent three nights there and did two day hikes.
It took us a day to paddle down the lake to our second camp where we spent three nights and did two more day walks before heading down the river. Here we are looking for a campsite at the far end of the lake and it's pretty open and pretty windy. Time for a little scotch, cheese and crackers, and a little banjo music. We ran into all these bushes without any leaves and it didn't take Tom long to figure out what was going on.
after a long day hiking, it's time to get cleaned up a little bit, have some uh, scotch cheese and crackers, and uh, relax a little bit. Well, the rest of the group went, took another day hike on the other side of the lake. Uh, I went up on the hill behind camp and spotted the first bears. Shark is an expert in identifying mushrooms, so she picked a few for dinner. Well, after several days of hiking, we finally headed down the river.
That gravel bar right there where that creek comes in, that's where those bears were. Oh, yeah? Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Saw over a dozen bears on the trip. They were all just walking along the bank picking up dead carcasses and uh, the best part was they were pretty people shy. Because of all the bears, we did our best to camp in old, really open areas and uh, oftentimes on an island. Here's a map showing the places that we camped uh, along the trip.
fish right there, huh? Yeah. Going out the ocean. Going back. This is how I could tell the water was class one. We decided to do a little fishing, see if we could catch something for dinner. And surprisingly enough, the only thing in here were really grayling and uh, red salmon.
Well, the last night on the river, we made camp right in front of an eagle's nest, and so we spent the whole evening just watching the adults feed the chicks. Well, we came out of the river onto the lakes uh, just below Chick Chick Narrows, and then we spent the rest of the day paddling down the lake and getting to our takeout spot. Well, here's the pick-out point, so it's time to deflate the boats and uh, enjoy one more evening before we get picked up in the morning.
What if I missed any vital information? <coughs> What's going on with your sister? Anything important? Two for one graphic <laughs> Um, well, that's because they're saying only 65% of that that we have been back. Awesome. Nicely done, John. Hey, it turned Very out good. it turned out pretty good on mine. I don't know how it was on everybody else's, but it was good here. Right on your bed. Excellent. I noticed a couple of questions. Uh, Todd Davis asked how many days. I think we took ten days. We spent six of those on the lake camping and stuff, and then another four days on the river. And we did it two years ago in, in the first of August. Anybody else got any questions they'd like to ask? John, the geology there is pretty interesting. It's like some of those little lakes look like tarn lakes, but they don't really look like glacier, glacial yeah. cirques at all. Is it volcanic? What, what kind of? You know, I don't know. I should ask my nephew. He, the guy with us, is a geologist. He could have answered that question. There was a place where the, the a puddle had washed out, and when we were hiking there, you saw those uh, that gravel, you know, with the rocks on it and stuff. That we that was a really strange place. But obviously, water had rushed across there and, and created that. Yeah, I don't I don't know the answer to that. It was a good trip. I mean, it, it's, uh, it was easy. I don't lay awake at night worrying about anything. And even in those canyons, I, I thought sure there was going to be something at the end of them, you know, some riffles or something or other, nothing. I mean, it's cut its way through there. And when you take the lakes, the third lake down, there's some really nasty stuff in the water between the lakes. I mean, there's a couple of places where you're, you definitely can't run it. You know, you have to portage it. So, but this is all easily runnable and uh, safe and fun. Yeah. Um, are you seeing the chat questions there, John? You know, I, I saw a couple. I didn't look at all of them. No. Okay. Uh, Karen Jensen was asking how you stored your food. Well, uh, that's real simple. We put it in, uh, in the bear proof uh, barrels, but basically uh, this group has decided that we're not going to do a whole lot of cooking except uh, heat up water. So we took pretty much freeze dried stuff. Uh, and then we just boiled water and added it. So there, we didn't have a whole lot of problem with, you know, fresh food and stuff. Uh, we had probably 30 pounds of cheese that we ate. <laughs> but other than that, it was pretty much non-smelly stuff. Anything else? Uh, Gail Martin was asking, uh, said that you noticed that you're using canoe paddle in your uh, IK and your Tomcat. I wondered how you liked that. Well, I paddle it like a canoe, you know, and, and except when you get on the lakes. Now, one of the mistakes I made is I didn't, I didn't really think about it. I should have taken my kayak paddles too, because on the lake, you definitely need a kayak paddle. Lord, that thing was terrible. So Tom had uh, a set of those paddles and uh, 
the plastic ones and he, we took them apart and made a kayak paddle out of them and it saved my butt. Uh, but no, I, a little tributary, uh, I think paddles real good with just canoe paddles. I, one other thing I might mention on that upper river, there was one, one picture I showed where it was really brushy and narrow. That upper part, there's some, it's kind of like the upper Chattanooga or the upper Chena. You can get in real trouble there in the brush. You gotta be careful. But other than that, it's pretty simple. And uh, I see uh, Margie was asking if you had no rain. We had no rain, no, no bugs, no head nets. I mean, the bugs were, I mean, minimal. I, and that's been pretty much, that was the same for both trips down there in that time of year. Was it just because there was enough wind? Uh, well, around the lake, that was probably true. On the river, I don't know what the answer is. Huh? Wow. There, weren't many, there weren't many bugs. I mean, I did. I there was a few, a couple nights maybe we had a problem, but I don't even remember it. Wow, nice. It was the terrain for walking, and those, are, you know, I think once you get on a river, the walking wouldn't be very good. The hiking wouldn't be very good. It's brushy and stuff, but up in that upper tundra, it was really easy walking. And I think that we took one hike. Uh, the first day was probably eight miles, so. It, Eight, I mean, eight miles back, so we probably walked 16 miles. I mean, it was not a short, short walk. Uh, I went on most of them. I'm, I'm 80 now, so I can't keep up with these guys, and I didn't go on all of them. But uh, firearms, didn't take any firearms. We had bear spray. Uh, anything else here? Yeah, can you believe all the flowers? I mean, I was flat. Yeah, it was incredible, wow. for, especially for August, though. I was amazed. I mean, you know, and we got back and the girls did some looking up on the names of them and stuff, but there were just flowers everywhere. I was really surprised. Lots of blueberries. Yeah, yeah, the flowers and blueberries at the same time. <laughs> yeah. That's amazing, yeah. yeah. I mean, that iris, I couldn't believe it. I just fell over when I saw that iris. Holy cow. There weren't many, uh, you know, I think if you got there in September, you might see some caribou and stuff. There were definitely a lot of caribou sign, but they were not there when we were there. So if you went later, you might see caribou, but you know, there's so many, so much, so many salmon that the bears are just everywhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we were careful. It looks like Ron is asking about the plane. What, what? Oh, the, what's he asking? About what plane? What uh, planes were flying in what aircraft? Well, they they flew us in a Beaver and a 185. The 185 cheaper and faster. Uh, you know, we take a lot of stuff. Way too much, probably. That tent, that big tent weighs about 30, 35 pounds. But it's nice when it rains and stuff. So we just do it. Uh, you know, and even on the portages, the the guys ported it around so we just do it but it's nice to have a, a big tent like that when it rains and we've had a couple of trips where it just poured on us for a while everybody can get inside of that but yeah the, the the beaver carries a heck of a lot I mean it'll carry three or four people with all their gear really so we had five of us so we we had to have two loads and it's it's probably it was I think it was about fifteen hundred dollars a piece from from Dillingham up there. And the guy, the guy, the operation's a real good operation. They're, they're careful and knowledgeable and, and uh, you know, you really feel safe with them. And uh, Scott Bell was asking about the names of the lake you started on, started and ended on. What was it? I forgot. I put it on there. I can't remember now. Uh, it's, the, it's the first lake. It's the uppermost lake. Because the, the first, yeah, Nishlik. That's right. That's right, Al. The uh, the first three lakes are are non motorized, uh, and and you have to have a permit to get on them. Everything below that, it, you can take motorboats and stuff. So when you get down to Chick Chick Narrows, there's a big lodge there. We started seeing people, but until we got down there to the, to the that lake, we hadn't seen anybody. And no tracks. Uh, no campgrounds, or, you know, no footprints of people or anything. So it's really a really wild place. Re really, really nice. And Ron was asking about the elevation they put in. You know, it couldn't have been much. I don't know, but uh, it's. I can't imagine it's more than a few thousand feet at the max. I, I don't. I don't know the answer to that. But you got you have questions about rainbows in the river and uh, and river otters. Yeah. No, no river otters and uh, no rainbows. Didn't see any rainbows, fish or in the sky. 
<laughs> I thought there would be some rainbow fish in there because they're down lower. They're at, you know, when you go out of Nich or Chick Chick Lakes, there's river, the river down there has a lot of rainbows in it, but there was nothing in the river. And I talked to some people down there and they said, the only thing you might get would be a, a char or something or other, which kind of surprised me because geez, there's a lot of food there for them. Lord, all those, all those salmon eggs and stuff. Lots of grayling. And then the other question was about, uh, Mark S was asking uh, how and when you apply for a permit. You know, it, it's state park. It's the biggest state park in the world. Uh, you know, when, uh, when Alaska became a state, the state chose that and they made a park out of it, which is fantastic. Uh, so you just don't need to go to state parks. I don't remember, Tom did that. I don't remember what it cost them, but I would do it early because uh, they limit the number of people. And, uh, you know, so you, you have to tell them when you want to be there. And I think they limit it to two parties on the lake at once. And when we were there, there was nobody there. So we had the whole place to ourselves. You know, that's pretty fantastic, really. Yeah. Anything How else? How much you need for a 10 day trip? Yeah, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we had a really good time. I, I'd recommend it to anybody, really. If you want to get away from things for a week, that's a good, really good place to go. And it's, it's, I think it's pretty affordable. I mean, it's not cheap, but it's for a wilderness trip like that, it's pretty cheap. Uh, Gail's asking if it's a good trip to take a dog along on. Well, I wouldn't take a dog with all those bears. I don't know. I mean, the water is certainly suitable, suitable for them. I, I don't know. You have to decide that yourself, I guess. But there's a lot of bears there, and, and you're going to see them. So I, I don't know. It depends on how you think your dog does around bears. And then a uh, question about how much, how much dragging you had to do if there was plenty of water or if you had to do some dragging there. We didn't do any dragging. No dragging. No, nope, the water was good. No portages. Just some places where it was real brushy and narrow. Uh, but no, it was, it's easy. It's easy. The, the water trip is easy. I mean, it really is. Yep, no rain. I, I don't know why we didn't get any rain. <laughs> that place can be rainy for 10 days, you know. But it was, we had good weather, and I, we've, that's the second trip we've been down there, and we haven't had rain in August on either one of them. So wow. I think that's a good time to go if you want to stay away from the, the maximum rain. How did, I'm curious how, how, it, how the show came out on, the, on people's screens. I mean, mine was really good. There was very little uh, problem with stabilization or anything. I was kind of surprised because I know you were worried about it. I can't, I don't know what it would look like. It looks great. Doing, looks great. So, uh, yeah. Good. Yeah, I, I had it plugged into my big screen and it still looked good. So, good. Yeah. Oh, excellent. That's good to hear because we were worried. Yeah. Okay. Well, we will still try to make it available. It looks like we didn't come uh, close to hitting our 100 limit. <laughs> we were a little concerned about it. And we, we've got one more door price set and it's, uh, I don't have the, Canoe logo, but uh, the last prize of the evening are Fairbanks Paddler's new hats. They're uh, canvas hat in either blue. They say Fairbanks Paddler's on the, uh, let's see, where's my camera? <laughs> uh, Fairbanks Paddler's on the back and they've got the round version of either the kayak or the canoe logo and the colors are green or blue. If you can see with all the glare coming off my top of my head. Okay, uh, we've got 52. So we got 52 people left on here. Okay, and it's number, number four. four. Oh, I don't know, Don, that looks like you. Don Morak. Really? Well, <laughs> John, well, I don't have one of those hats. I'd like it. I'll pick okay, it up. Okay, what color and what? Uh, what uh, canoe and kayak or green? Green or I blue? Want a, I want a canoe one, as if that's what's. Canoe, yep. green or blue? Uh, how about green? Green. Perfect. Green canoe and just. Uh, just drop in the chat there your address to send it to and we'll get it on your way. I'll just, I'll just get it when I get back to town. I'll give you a call. Okay. Okay. <laughs> we'll set it aside for you. Okay. Thanks a lot. Excellent. Yeah. Thanks everybody for coming. Yeah. This thank you. Was great. Great I'm show. so glad it great, worked. Great presentation. Lots of thank yous on there. Yeah, well, good. I'm glad everybody enjoyed it.
Yeah, that was a great. lot of work on that. Beautiful. Really, uh, it, you know, in Fairbanks, we're getting a lot of snow. It was really wonderful to see the flowers and the berries and the green. It was it was great. Thanks. And uh, folks, get, if you want to get your own hat and T-shirts, they're available for sale on uh, the FairbanksPaddlers.org and also the tickets for the virtual film festival, FairbanksPaddlers.org. If you go to FilmFest21 slash FilmFest21, it'll go directly to it or it's the first post right now on the, on the front page. So um, nicely done. Thanks, everybody. Very good.